Okay, so here we have a sample of a problem with this notation, like that. Well, this sign um, is an example where they make up an operation with some kind of symbol. It's a function. And they tell you what it means. They say, well, when you see this symbol, it means add w and x, multiply the result by y, and then subtract z. And here they show you that the, the order of the numbers they'll give you, w, x, y, z, will um, be the order in which the numbers appear. So here, 3 is w, um, x is 5, 6 is y, 3 is z, and then same thing here, w, x, y, and z. So they want to know what's the value of this sign for these numbers minus the, this sign for these numbers. So we're going to add w and x, the first two numbers, over here, and we get 8 and then we're going to multiply it by y. y is 6, so 8 times 6 is 48. <clears throat> and then um, we subtract z from that. So z is 3, so it's 48 minus 3, which is 45. Now over here we do the same thing. w and x are 4 and 6, so we add them to get 10. We multiply it by 3, which is y, and get 30. And then we take 30 and subtract 5 to get 25. Now we're going to take 45 and subtract 25 from it to get our answer h of 20. In the next problem we have a percentage. 12 out of 25 students picked the Flying Fuzz Brothers as their favorite video game. So they want to know what percentage of the class did not pick the Flying Fuzz Brothers game. Well, I'm going to assume that there are 25 people here because what they're saying is 12 out of 25. Well, if 12 out of 25 picked the game, we we're, we're also have to assume that the rest did not. And that means 13 out of 25 did not take the game. Also notice they put 13% there and 13 over 25 percent to kind of throw you off. But that's not what this is saying. It's saying 13 for every 25 not 13 25ths of a percent. And just because you have 13 over here doesn't mean that's a percent, right? So these are out. And a percent is always out of 100, so I'm going to rescale this relationship out of 100. I notice that 25 goes into 100 four times. So if I'm going to rewrite this fraction out of 100, I'm going to also have to multiply 13 times 4 and get 52. And there's our answer, E right there. Up next, the product of three different positive integers is 10. What is their sum? Well, let's say we take three different numbers and we know that the product, which means multiplication, is going to be um, 10. What is their sum? Well, you have to think about positive integers. That includes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so forth. And we know that 3 of them uh, multiplies to 10, so we don't really have that many options. For example, we probably have to use 1 times 2 and times 5, because 3 times 4, well, it's not going to work. 3 times 6, 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 is not a factor of 10, so we couldn't use 3. We couldn't use 6 or 7 or 8. All of these combinations don't work. 4 times, well, 4 times 2.5 gives me 10, but we have to use integers. Integers are positive, well, in this case, positive integers. That's positive whole numbers. So we have to use 1, 2, and 5. 5 times 2 is 10, times 1 is still 10. If we add them up, we get our sum of 8. And then we also have a circle. It has an area of p square feet. Remember, pi r squared pi times the radius squared is how you find the area of a circle, and we know that equals p. And the circumference, which is 2 pi r, or 2 r is diameter, diameter pi, that equals q. And we're told that the pi r squared, or p, equals 2.5 q. And they want to know what's the radius of this circle. So one way to perhaps deal with this is to kind of isolate what the radius is and maybe get rid of the fact that we have these two terms here. So what I think of, first of all, is 2.5q equals p, which equals pi r squared. That also kind of means, well, excuse me, it does mean that 2.5q 
also equals pi r squared. And we want to know what r is. So what we can do here is isolate r in the equation. And I'm going to do that by dividing by pi r on both sides. So 2.5q over pi r equals r. That's not going to help me, so I'm going to bring that r back up here. So we know r squared equals 2.5q over pi. And q, going back to this right here, equals 2 pi r. So we get 2.5q, or 2.5 times 2 pi r, because q equals 2 pi r, divided by pi. Well, the pi's will cancel out. And we get 2.5 times 2, which is 5. So this equals 5 times r. And that equals r squared, because r squared equals this whole thing to begin with. So now that means if I divide both sides by r, I get r equals 5, and that's the radius of my circle.